everybody, what is going on? Welcome to Regular Josh 1. Now before we start here, I, I just need to make a couple of changes, so just hold on a second. Ah, now that's better. It's been a while since I've changed my look for this channel. I hope you guys like it. I want to give a quick shout out to an artist named Kimi Nuki for doing this for me. She's such a great artist and I really love her drawing style. Plus, she was very fast at getting this done, which was awesome by the way. I'm going to link her page in the description box down below so you guys can check out more of her drawings. I, I really can't thank her enough for doing these. Like, these are just great. I like, I'm so happy we got this done. So, thank you, thank you very much for doing this if you're watching this video. like. You're amazing. In my last video, I did mention earlier about Cam Coral and how the show was being delayed and moved to CBS All Access. I never really talked about my thoughts on Cam Coral all that much in this channel, so might as well do it right now. So as we all know, Cam Coral is going to be the first spin-off series of SpongeBob, where we will see SpongeBob and all of his friends when they were younger, and they all apparently went to the exact same camp. Now the one thing that I have to say, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that raises this concern, is doesn't this show technically ruin continuity? As you can see, Sandy is also attending this camp. Weird, because I could have sworn that she didn't always live underwater her whole life. Maybe for whatever reason, her parents sent her to a camp underwater? Why would they do that? How did they even find out about a camp underwater? Was there not a good enough camp for her to join in Texas? Why am I putting so much thought into this? The thing that confuses me the most is, wasn't it established that Sandy and Spongebob met each other later on in their lives? I get it. Spongebob is episodic, so there isn't really that much of an underlying story to the show. But come on, you just can't change how they first met. It, it just makes everything so confusing. I guess I do understand why they put her in there, considering that she is one of the main characters of Spongebob, but still, I think it just messes up the, the continuity of the show, and it just makes things very confusing. Now, of course, when news broke out about this, people were incredibly furious. Everyone is talking about how it's disrespectful to the creator, how he would have hated the idea of this spinoff. They announced the show after his death, and that definitely set people off. You had at least one or maybe two people who worked on the show that also talked about how Hillenburg would have definitely not approved of this. There's also a quote of him talking about how if there were to have been a Spongebob Baby series, he would have been out. Now, here's where I am in all of this. I don't know if he ever knew about the series or not. I'm curious because if you guys remember, it was announced in 2016 or maybe a little earlier or later than that, that SpongeBob was going to get a third movie. And in 2018, a plot for the movie was announced as well. Originally, it was going to be called A Wonderful Sponge, where it was going to be an origin story as to how SpongeBob met everybody at a camp. So if anything, the idea of Spongebob being younger and going to camp was already well known at this point. That would mean that Hillenburg most likely knew about this as well. Now, whether he knew that they would want to take this idea and turn it into a spinoff, we may never know about that. He did say that he just couldn't see a spinoff happening, which at the time was definitely understandable. I mean, I don't think any of us would have been able to really see a spinoff based on any of the other characters, especially Patrick freaking star. Hell, I'm sure he would have never expected an idea that Spongebob would have ever been on Broadway, but he did fully approve of that. I'm sure a lot of people thought that he would have been against it, but no, he was actually all for it and worked with them on the idea, so there's an interesting fact for you. So if anything, that's where I am really on this talk of whether he would have hated this series or not. Even with what some people have been saying, there's just no full way of knowing or ever confirming that. And because of that, I think I'm just gonna have to leave it at that. Now, Camp Coral was planning on coming out after the movie was released. The show was going to air on Nickelodeon in July of this year. Of course, a certain event forced to shut down everything and movies were all mainly halted. A lot of them were just delayed to next year. That was then where we heard news of Trolls World Tour being released online and the same for Scoob shortly after. After the success of these runs, we all had our eyes on Sponge on the Run. I was definitely expecting them to announce an online release of the movie, but to our surprise, that never happened. Instead, what we got was, well, pretty confusing. 
Sponge on the Run and Camp Coro is no longer coming out this year. It's been delayed to next year. And if that wasn't bad enough, not only is it being delayed a full year, it's going to premiere on CBS All Access. If this was only the movie releasing on CBS All Access, that would be fine in a way. But Camp Coral was supposed to air on Nickelodeon, and now that also has been moved here. I'm not gonna lie to you, but this really annoys me, and for a couple of reasons. It's not like I was excited for the show or anything, but if Camp Coral was originally announced to air on Nickelodeon, then why all of a sudden switch it to Access? I guess it has to do with Sponge on the Run premiering there as well, so maybe there's some reasoning behind that. Maybe after kids see the movie, they would check out the spinoff. That's probably what they would hope would happen, so if that's the case, fine. However, here's the real question here, the big one. Why on earth aren't they releasing it this year, but waiting until next year to air the movie? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. The movie has been released now, but in Canada. That's right. Sponge on the Run is currently being shown in movie theaters in Canada. And yet, in the US, if we want to see this movie, we're gonna have to wait a whole nother year to see it on CBS All Access. What? sense does that make? I mean, you've had a bunch of people who were hoping to see the movie this year in some way, and, and now they have to wait even longer. I mean, I get it, you can't show it in movie theaters for obvious reasons, but still, you, you gotta delay it next year? And here's the worst part about it. Spoilers. Spoilers for this movie are going to be everywhere. I mean, they're gonna be on Facebook, they're gonna be on Twitter, they're gonna be on Instagram, they're gonna be on YouTube. People are already posting pictures from the movie online, it's already happening right now. Honestly, even Disney was going to delay Mulan indefinitely, but now they decided to release it on Disney Plus on September 4th. Maybe they will change their minds about the release date of Sponge on the Run, but if they don't, they clearly have no idea what they're doing. I mean, do they not realize that bootlegs are gonna be a thing? Anyways, what do you guys think about this whole mess with Camp Coral and Sponge on the Run? I definitely would love to know what you all have to say about this. So let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and hit the bell to be notified on my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, you're hearing it from a regular bunny in a regular world. See you next time.